Hey guys, welcome to The Market is Open. Tesla Battery Day is fast approaching and Elon Musk has stated multiple times how excited he is about this historic day for Tesla and that the company has a lot to share. In this video, we're pooling together investor expectations and having an overall look at what Tesla could announce. Keep in mind that after Tesla's last big shareholder meeting at Autonomy Day, the stock price dropped after the event since the catalyst had passed and investors didn't have much to look forward to. It's possible though that some of the things that Tesla announces this time will be more concrete and hit the market sooner than autonomy. So let's have a closer look at what Elon Musk might announce on Battery Day and what investors are expecting. But before we begin, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and smash the like button to help support this video. You can also support the channel further at patreon.com slash the market is open where we give a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. Also, stop using Yahoo and Google Finance. Have a look at our website, The Market is Open, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data for every company that goes back nine years' time. Yahoo, for example, uses predetermined buckets and isn't showing you the financial data that the companies actually report. You can also build your own stock portfolios and choose to publicly share it to have people give their feedback. And we have a news message board where you can comment on any news article. In no particular order, let's begin with the million mile battery. In the 2017-2018 timeframe, Elon Musk predicted or stated that in about two years time, Tesla would be able to come out with a million mile battery. Of course, Tesla had started working on this years ago. Currently, Tesla batteries will last on the order of 300,000 miles. We went more in depth on this topic in our million mile battery video. Basically, when you charge and discharge your vehicle over and over, or you accelerate constantly and heat up the battery as you max it out, you begin to wear out the battery and it forms small microscopic cracks that eventually grow in size and slowly start to break the battery. But the current 300,000 miles, that's the lifetime of the battery before it degrades dramatically. So for most people, that's already the lifetime of their vehicles, if not a few vehicle lifetimes. And so therefore, what's the point of getting to a million miles, which would triple the current longevity? Who needs their car batteries to last that long? So we believe that this is necessary for enabling Tesla's next wave of vehicles, including semi-trucks and robo-taxis. Both of these are on the roadmap and will be used heavily and constantly throughout each day as they are driven for the majority of the day and travel long distances. Charging a car or truck every day or even multiple times a day could quickly wear out a battery. And so the million miles is more about increasing the number of charge cycles that the vehicles can endure. We believe that this will be one of the primary announcements on battery day, but we'll have to see how this makes its way into different types of vehicles. And also being able to handle many types of charge cycles is also important for home batteries like the Powerwall or the Megapack for Tesla's commercial batteries. However, I don't think Tesla will use these new batteries and Powerwalls just yet. I think these batteries will be high performance, which simply isn't needed for a Powerwall. That said, if Tesla can boost new battery production, perhaps it will free up more of the current batteries for Tesla energy. Increased battery density. The batteries used in a Tesla Model 3 have a specific energy of around 260 watt hours per kilogram. This is the amount of energy that is stored per unit mass of the battery. We're already seeing Tesla's partner Panasonic with the goal of increasing this density over the next few years. But Tesla may have a new battery chemistry that may be more energy packed. And so it's expected that Tesla will unveil higher density batteries plus a clearer roadmap for reaching 400 watt hours per kilogram over the next three to four years, which is something that Elon had tweeted. This reduces weight and higher energy could mean longer range with the same weight of the battery or reduced weight and cost for the same amount of range. Right now, Tesla is also targeting to breach the $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level this is the level where electric vehicles are supposed to be competitive with gas powered vehicle and so breaking through this will help Tesla reduce their costs so that they can increase profit margins and lower prices. Tesla has tended towards the latter and I think this is very important because the average price of the car in the US is closer to $32,000. Tesla's cheapest car is just under $40,000 so they are still in the sweet spot. I think electric vehicles are currently extremely competitive with most internal combustion cars but as you move down in price the size of the market expands dramatically. For instance, the number of $30,000 vehicles sold is about five times that of $50,000 vehicles and so this could contribute to a jolt for EV adoption. Speed of production. To me, the third point of what's expected for Battery Day is the most important for Tesla right now and will help Tesla quicken the transition off of fossil fuels. I'm looking very closely at Tesla's plan for increasing battery production speed. Batteries have been the largest constraint on Tesla's business. The current vehicles, their battery chemistries, efficiencies, performance, and longevity are actually quite good right now, and there's huge demand for Tesla's vehicles. The bottleneck is production and it's held back by batteries. 
Also, if you consider that the Tesla Semi needs about 5 to 10 Model S size batteries per truck, and that's the largest battery that Tesla currently makes, then Tesla is going to need way more batteries to get these new products to market. There's also some scuttlebutt that Tesla is working on a project called Project Roadrunner, which will likely combine the expertise of a few acquisitions Tesla has made, including Maxwell Technologies and High Bar Systems, in order to build their own battery lines, each with higher production speed. Furthermore, there are some potentially leaked images for a larger battery cell form factor. In order for this to make sense, Tesla would have indeed figured out a way to reduce the heat generated internal to the battery. This may be related to their tabless battery patent, which we discuss in the Million Mile Battery video. Reduced heat means battery cells could get larger and therefore fewer cells would be needed to produce each vehicle. This could drastically improve manufacturing speed, and likely the cost as well. From an investor's perspective, this would mean larger vehicles such as the Semi hit the market sooner, and Tesla can increase their overall capacity. I think people are excited to see a demo or explanation of this at Battery Day. It would be nice to know the speed of the new Roadrunner line relative to Panasonic's lines, what types of batteries they'll be making, like what chemistry, and which vehicles will use this. Of course, the Roadrunner line seems to be a demonstration at the Fremont facility. And so a roadmap would be quite helpful here because I think this will have the highest impact on the growth of Tesla's business. Having great, energy-dense Tesla batteries is one thing, but it's expected that Tesla will offer a solution for expanding production. Faster charging speeds. Now, I don't think many people are expecting faster charging speeds at the supercharger stations is something that would be announced on battery day. So I view this one as sort of a bonus, which if announced could not only help Tesla better compete with gas stations and other EV charging stations, but also have happier customers who don't need to spend as much time charging up. Given that there is an expectation for better battery chemistries and a 1 million mile battery with higher charging cycles, it's possible Tesla's batteries have become more durable or don't heat up as much thanks to better design. And so if that's the case, then the question may be, are Tesla's V3 superchargers future-proofed in the sense that if needed, could they deliver more power to charge a vehicle faster? Couple that with batteries that can handle this additional power without overheating or degrading faster, this would allow for faster charging speeds. Additionally, about four years ago, Elon Musk joked that 350 kilowatts was a children's toy. Maybe it was just a joke because the latest superchargers don't have that rate just yet. And so does Tesla have anything up their sleeve here? Increased safety. There's a misconception that electric cars spontaneously combust after you buy them, but really the media just loves to talk about Tesla battery fires. Of course, the vehicles containing combustion engines catch fire way more often than Tesla's and no one seems to care. Now obviously Tesla has multiple layers of safety within each vehicle, which has allowed even the small number of people who have had their batteries catch fire, many of them have time to simply get out of their cars unharmed. That's not always true when your car is carrying around flammable liquid gasoline. Also, there are battery chemistries which won't catch fire even when punctured, so I don't think that this will change much relative to the long-term investment thesis for the company unless there is a drastic change, but a better safety profile could help ease concerns for Tesla car buyers and increase adoption. And guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, we'd super appreciate it if you hit the like button. That would help us out a lot. Thanks so much. The Plaid Powertrain Although we keep calling it Battery Day, it is Battery and Powertrain Investor Day. We know that Tesla is working on what they call a Plaid Powertrain. That's their triple motor setup. This will allow for increased vehicle performance. As if the Model S needs a performance boost, but sure, why not? But Model X and Cybertruck and of course the Tesla Roadster will also be getting Plaid. First off, this is enabled by better batteries capable of delivering more power to these motors. In terms of expectations, we know Plaid's going to be good. We're simply looking for a timeline on when Plaid will hit the road. Some more specific specs would be a bonus here, but really I think that Plaid will help Tesla differentiate these vehicles from the competition, which could help boost sales of the lagging Model S and X and pave the road for the best supercar the world has ever seen, which will be the Roadster. And that will help keep Tesla's halo effect in full effect. New products. If you follow our channel, we've been saying that Tesla's battery day announcements will help to enable new products. For example, as we mentioned earlier, we believe that the Tesla Semi can only be enabled with new batteries with higher longevity since the Semis will be on the road all day constantly and will need to be charged very frequently at high speed given its massive battery. We also think that robo-taxis can greatly benefit from a million mile battery type since Uber and taxi drivers may be driving all day. One of the worst things for the current batteries is draining them all the way and then charging them back to the top over and over. Batteries generally like a narrower charging gap, and so semis, robotaxis, underground shuttles, anything that's running constantly all day would benefit from longer life, more durable batteries. 
In addition, the higher-end semi and Cybertruck will each have 500 miles of range. Even the Roadster is set to have 600 miles of range with a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, though it's a smaller vehicle. These larger trucks need much bigger batteries to attain their respective ranges. Not only is better battery density important here, but as we mentioned, increased battery production is critical for enabling these products and actually having enough batteries to make these vehicles. Battery day is also important for Tesla's future roadmap of creating smaller, cheaper vehicles with a decent amount of range. If Tesla can greatly reduce the cost of such a vehicle, they can certainly hit a much larger mass market. Becoming a battery supplier It's a bit strange that Elon Musk offered to supply batteries to third parties given that Tesla is battery constrained. Why would Tesla sell its batteries when they themselves need them more than ever? So I think this may hint at Tesla's increased production capability, which I think was most important. If they do this, then Tesla will charge a fair price to supply others, and if they don't find any takers, Tesla will simply use the batteries themselves. Elon says he doesn't want to crush the competitors. I think it's a good strategy for him to say that. However, I do think that some competitors do need to be crushed. Let's start with anyone dealing with an overpriced dealership, aka a dealership. Getting into the mining business. During the last conference call, Elon Musk stated that Teslas need more nickel and that he's willing to offer long-term contracts for companies who can deliver sustainable nickel to Tesla. Tesla's current battery chemistry, NCA, nickel cobalt aluminum, has great characteristics and I believe it's used in every single one of Tesla's vehicles, except in China where they are partnering with cattle which will supply LFP, lithium iron phosphate batteries which don't contain nickel. Also, Tesla's NMC, nickel manganese, cobalt oxide batteries, are used mainly for things like home batteries and power walls, etc. And so nickel is present in both of those. It sounds like Tesla's future chemistry will be heavy on nickel, an element that has very favorable chemical properties. And so Elon Musk has always envisioned that raw materials would basically be constantly streamed into their factory on semi-trucks, and on the other side, cars would pop out. In order to achieve that vision, Tesla may need to better control their supply chain. Elon has said that Tesla may get into the mining business, but perhaps they can find reliable partners. So I'm looking for more insight on this, but I know Tesla will make the best decision for the company to reach its goals. Core redesign. So this one I saved to the end is pretty interesting. Elon Musk said that the Model Y that's going to be coming out of the Berlin factory will have a radical redesign of the core technology of building a car, and this is something that he's going to talk about on Battery Day. Many people seem to think that this will be a giant stamping machine that will basically stamp or cast pretty much the entire vehicle at once, according to a patent that Tesla filed. I think that they will have something like this, but I don't think this is what Elon is referring to. I think it may be the amount of wiring in the vehicle. Model S had 3 kilometers of wiring, Model 3 had 1.5 kilometers, and Model Y was supposed to have 100 meters of wiring. However, Elon's team convinced him to build the vehicle on the same platform as the Model 3. This probably allowed them to get Model Y to market much faster, and so it was a good decision. But Model Y has the same amount of wiring as Model 3. However, I think that when Elon says something, he usually delivers it eventually, and so I would be very interested to see if the Berlin Model Y has less wiring. That makes it a cheaper car. You need a redesign to achieve that. Sandy Monroe keeps saying that Tesla will use wireless Bluetooth to achieve that. I'm not exactly sure about the security and therefore the safety of that. It's possible that the power wires will also have communication capabilities. That seems to be a better idea, but we'll have to see. Either way, Tesla needs to bring everything they've got to Germany, which is the home of some of the largest automakers in the world. And if you're going to beat them on their own turf, you're going to have to come for the King Volkswagen and you best not miss. Overall, I think that Tesla stock tends to run up into these big events and then sell off after the event occurs. First off, if that happens, then you get an opportunity to buy the stock after battery day. But as a long-term investor, the short-term stock price shouldn't matter. I'm keeping a close eye on these 10 items, especially Tesla's battery production roadmap, to see where Tesla's long-term business is headed and how fast it's going to get there. Please let us know in the comments if we miss something that you think Tesla will discuss on battery day. Also, we have a great Tesla insurance video up. See the link in the description for how we think Tesla will wreck insurance competitors. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button on this video. We'd super appreciate that. It would be very helpful for our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of upcoming Tesla content. To support us further, head on over to patreon.com slash the market is open. And a special thanks to Bradford Ferguson of Halter Ferguson Financial and all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thanks so much for watching.